Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to paint another gouache landscape, the one that you can see here. And what I found interesting about this scene was the dark trees with the bright foliage in the foreground and then the trees slowly disappearing into the fog in the background. And also there were very interesting colors, I thought, in the background, sort of these um, purples and pinks and blues, whereas the foreground colors are more typical autumn colors. So that is what intrigues me about this scene and what gives is this slightly mysterious quality that I want to explore in this painting. As you know, I'm doing this series of landscapes that could be a backdrop or a background for these kind of local legends or folktale stories. And this is one of the uh, landscapes that I chose for this. So I hope you'll enjoy this painting demo and let's jump right in. As always, I'm starting with a pencil sketch or colored pencil sketch. It will all disappear under gouache layers, so it doesn't really matter what kind of color you choose. I'm blocking in the basic shapes for the trees and I have my little preliminary sketch next to me so that I can check the colors and the shapes in my bigger painting. So this is really all I need and now I can start painting and I've mixed a really bright yellow green that I place in those areas where I can see the light coming through from the background and in the foreground and I'm starting uh, wet and wet and layering these sort of green and reddish tones that make up these wonderful autumn colors that I can see. I'm keeping the paint really thin and diluted at this point and I'm slowly uh, sculpting the different kinds of colors and layers that I can uh, see in the reference. So um, I, you can see me from time to time uh, adding a little bit of water with a bigger brush. Now that everything has dried in my first layer, I'm adding a bit of dark where this uh, tree trunk is in the foreground. And this is just a very preliminary uh, placeholder, so to speak. And with a smaller brush, I'm starting to work a bit more on the different uh, kinds of dark foliage uh, areas in the midground and in the background. Uh, still trying to keep everything really loose and really soft and blended as I paint into the background. And I'm using my water bottle from time to time for this because I don't want any hard edges in the background really want this to disappear into the fog and uh, to have to, to achieve this kind of mysterious quality. And the same thing goes for the area where I can see the trees disappearing in the background. I have wetted the area a little bit and I'm using slightly diluted but also slightly darker paint here. And then you can see the difference for the trees that are emerging, so to speak, in the foreground. I'm using darker paint and it's also on a dry surface, on a dried layer, so that they can really stand out against uh, the colors of the background. There's a layer of foliage and bushes in the midground that I've added in this neutral green and now I'm placing against this this uh, red that I can see from the foliage on the ground. And these two colors as complementaries will give a good contrast between each other and intensify each other. So I'm placing them, by placing them next, I can achieve this effect. And I'm starting to add my foliage on, on the trees, um, just trying to layer very lightly these, um, all of these leaves that I can see. And I'm not painting every single leaf. I, I don't want to render that much but I'm trying to place these sort of groups of leaves and um, of, of grasses on the ground that I can see these sort of um, randomly painted but still organized uh, clumps of leaves. I'm painting in a cool and a lighter green here with a bit of white and blue added and this reflects the light uh, in the shadows and also the light that shines through the canopy of leaves from above. 
So here you can see I'm slowly adding the different kinds of um, greens and yellows that uh, match the light quality of the scene. And how I do this typically is I load the paint onto the brush and then um, paint all the different areas in the scene with the same where I can see the same color. Now it's time to paint in the dark trees in the foreground and I have uh, mixed into my uh, dark color a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple to make the color a bit cooler. And I'm taking my time with this, always checking my small sketch and also my reference because these dark trees are really the center of the painting. So I want the forms and the shapes to be really uh, convincing and tree-like. I'm using a round brush for this. Uh, you could probably use a flat, a smaller flat brush for this too. But um, I like to be able to modulate the brush strokes while I'm um, executing the stroke, so to speak. And I'm adding the branches with these broken lines and these sort of uh, randomized patterns so that they look more natural. And again, I'm taking my time here. Um, the more branches that I paint in the background, the more diluted my paint is. And for another tree trunk in the foreground, I'm using a really thick, undiluted layer of paint. And to make things look a bit more natural, I'm using this bright yellow green with a small brush and I'm dotting in the leaves that are still sitting on the branches. And these little dots that are added here and there will give you the impression of a lot of uh, different things going on, lots of different layers of foliage where the light comes through and you can sort of peek through them into the background, into the fog. So these are really the things that make this scene more interesting. So I'm also again taking my time to add these little dots and clumps of leaves everywhere. Um, painting them smaller in the background, obviously, and making them a little bit larger in the foreground. And I'm using the same technique for the grasses in the foreground, adding these dots of light on top of uh, this shape of grass. I'm using this smaller Chinese brush. It gives very nice and interesting uh, brush strokes. And I'm changing the color temperature of the green to a warmer or a cooler version depending on the area where I'm painting. So I'm adding a bit more warmth where the very faint sunlight is hitting uh, the grass. Now I'm readjusting the areas that I just painted with a bit of a darker tone. And I'm also readjusting the lighting that falls onto the trees so painting these kind of scenes for me is always a process of readjusting and then readjusting again uh, and adding more information. Painting in another tree that's only visible through uh, the foliage. And finally I'm adding some of the details and of the leaves in the foreground. And I try to keep these as loose as I can with the little Chinese brush. Adding more of the same color around the rest of the painting. So basically I'm loading up my brush with one color and then I'm dabbing it in everywhere that I can see it. I'm darkening a few of, of the trees so that they really have this contrast. They really need to stand out from the background. I'm adding more foliage in different colors. So there's this um, muted red on one tree. And then more of this neutral brownish green in the midground in the bushes and some of the smaller trees. And then more of the light grasses in the foreground. 
and the rest is basically rendering more detail now. So I'm comparing the reference and my basic sketch with the version that I'm painting now and I'm seeing where I can add more detail and maybe more light, like this very light yellow that I'm adding in different areas now where um, I think I need uh, a little bit more of the specks of light foliage. Adding more of these muted brown leaves in a few areas. And another thing that I'm painting in is more of these very small twigs and branches that I can see peeking through the leaves. So I'm trying to see what the painting needs right now and which areas I want to um, bring to bring forward a little bit more. So basically the painting is readable right now as it is but I'm adding a bit more detail here and there just because it's fun and I think the painting will will get more interest and uh, have more interesting areas to look at. So I'm darkening the foreground a bit more in some areas, adding a bit of shadow. And these are really the finishing touches. So we're almost done here. It's always hard to stop fiddling around with the painting when it's basically done, but there's always a bit more detail that you could add. But I've decided to stop here and I'm taking off the masking tape. This is always the best moment in painting when you see the nice clear edges of your sketch. So I really like how this one turned out. I hope you enjoyed the painting process too. And as always, feel free to comment, like and subscribe. You can learn more about my folktale landscape project or about my gouache palette in my other videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!